Hello and welcome back to Elliot Designs. Today we'll be looking at the program named Equalizer APO. So, PCs today are pretty powerful, right? So why aren't we using them for DSP? Honestly, as long as you're using your PC as the audio source and not doing some massive home theatre setup, there is no reason. Also, it's just a great way to test out ideas and correction profiles before committing to a full design for active speakers, for instance. So let's dig right in. First of all, for the install and setup, you'll want to head to Equalizer APO, link in the description, and follow these steps carefully. When on EqualizerAPO.com, you'll want to scroll down a small amount, and you'll see a green button saying Download Equalizer APO. That's the button you'll want to click. On that page, you'll want to click the blue button saying APO Equalizer Download. Once inside the zip file, you'll see a folder for a Mac OS install. Unfortunately, I don't have a Mac computer, so I can't show you the install process of that. But for the Windows install, I can show you. This version is 1.2.1, and that is the latest version as of recording. Hit Run. Yes. Next. I agree. Next. Install. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to select all of the different playback devices that you'll want to use when applying equalization filters. Here, I only want it applied to my onboard audio. And I know for my audio, it only works when ticking troubleshooting options and installing as SFX EFX. You can figure this out for installing it without any troubleshooting options, doing a major change to the EQ, as I'll show you later, and seeing if it changes the audio output. If it doesn't, you'll want to go back to here in the configurator, which you can search for in the search menu, and then do as I said here, and then you'll want to reboot. Once rebooted, you can search your start menu for configuration editor, open this, and you'll be greeted with a window. There might be a few items here, but if they are, for example, like this, you can select the drop down arrow, and hit remove until you've got this blank screen. Once here, you can test your audio by selecting channel and seeing how many channels there are. And by going into basic filters, selecting the preamp and typing in a really negative number for gain. Then what you'll want to do is open up something that you know will produce sound, such as a music application or a video application test that you get sound with this turned off, and test that you get no sound with this turned on. That will tell you that the APO is installed correctly. If it isn't, there's a few things we can do. First things first, if you go into the start menu, search for sounds, this will bring up change system sounds. From here, it will open up the old fashioned control menu for audio. You can scroll down to the audio device that you're using, Select it. If all of the channels that you have aren't being represented up here, it likely means that it's not configured correctly. So once you've selected your output device, you'll go into configure and then select the amount of channels that your device can represent. Here I have four stereo analog outputs on my motherboard that can send out 7.1 surround sound. And so I'll select that, make sure all of these are selected. And another thing to check is in properties, advanced, that you have the correct rates that you want, both in bit depth, 24 bit in my case, and in sampling rate. In my case, I'm sticking for 48 kilohertz. Also, that having the audio enhancements enabled is crucial for if you want the experimental troubleshooting options, SFX, EFX, to be working. Now that we've changed those properties within the Windows Sounds configuration menu, we'll want to close the configuration editor and open it again. As you can see, all of the channels for my 7.1 surround sound are now enabled, and these are represented up here. First of all, we're going to jump into the deep end under advanced filters and convolution. For those of you who have just come here from my linear phase EQ series after my rephase video, if you want to check out that series, the link should be appearing on screen now. So what we do from here is we click this open folder icon, and we'll go over to where we saved our rephase file. Typically, unless you change the directory, it will be where your rephase install is. So we'll open that. You'll need to make sure that the impulse response was saved as a .wav file, otherwise this won't appear. You'll open it. As you can see, 
it is not able to read the directory. Now, there is quite an easy way we can go about this. Click up here on the top left. We can open all of the default configurations. Now what we can do is we can move this impulse.wav file over to this folder because we know it's a folder that the program can read from. Now that that's done, we can copy the address up here by left clicking, right clicking, copy, and then closing this off. Head over to our folder selection over here, up in the top, we remove this, right click, paste, hit enter, and it will send us to the equalizer APO config section where it can take the impulse from. There we go. And as you can see, it shows us our length of our impulse as well as the sample rate that it's configured for. If the sample rate of the impulse file does not match that of the device playback, it will show up in red and tell you that you need to change one or the other, i.e. change the device sample rate or the sample rate of the impulse file that we got from rephase. And as you can see in the bottom, we have our gain on the left and our frequency on the bottom. And as you can see, it has applied it to both the left channel and the right channel and all of the channels that we have selected. That is because our selected channels option up here is selected on all. Now, if you wanted to do separate corrections for each of the devices, it's quite simple really. So if this room correction was only for the left speaker, we select our left speaker and we can add all of our different configuration files for each of the channels. Here I'm just using the one impulse as an example. But as you can see, it's applying those for those channels only because we can go over to the left channel and right channel and it has them applied. But for all of the other channels, such as center, LFE, etc., etc., it hasn't applied them because we only have those selected here. Another option, if you wanted to apply some settings to multiple channels, not, but not all of them, what you can do is you can control click multiple of these. So what I'm doing there is I'm holding down control as I click. If you click one of the icons without holding down control, it will simply reset the selection. Now that's everything you'll need to know for applying your linear phase EQ room correction. So let's explore the rest of the program because there's a lot more to it. Under control, we also have our device selection. So if you applied equalizer APO to more than one output device, you can select these individually here. And this will mean that only the devices selected have the equalization that we're putting in below applied to it. Also, these numbers at the left are the order that things are being applied in. So for example, if I were to put in a basic filter of preamp, above this, it's applying to all of the channels. But if I put it below the selected channel option, it's only applying it to the left channel. You can also reset the selected channels by going into control, channel, and all. So here I've only got a preamplification being applied to the left channel, whereas anything I put below selected channels all will apply to all of the channels. Now I'm going to remove this filter since I only have the one device that equalizer APO is applied to. You do that by clicking these drop down arrows and remove. Next up is our basic filters. I've already shown you the preamp. But something I haven't shown you is what happens when you apply positive gain on all of the channels. There we go. What happens when you apply positive gain when you have nothing subtracting from it is you start to get a red bar. This is saying that you are clipping the audio that's being outputted. You do not want this. It will cause major distortion. The only time you'll want to use positive gain is when one of your other filters is applying negative gain to the whole range and you want to make sure that your peak gain is back to zero decibels so you don't lose any output. Before we go and see any of the other settings, I'm just going to select this to select all so we don't get any confusion later down the line. And we're going to go into basic filters and copy between channels. Here we have our input as green, i.e. any computer that's being sent from an application to the Windows Audio Manager. And in red, our output audio, the audio that's being sent to our audio output device, whether it be HDMI or in my case, analog motherboard outputs. Here, I'm going to show an example of what happens when we put the left and right channel audio into the center channel. The way you do this is you click and drag from the left channel, 
hold over the center channel. And if we go into the channel selection down here, we can see that as we click and drag the right channel into the center channel, we then get a peak gain of six decibels. This is because we now have two input channels going into one output channel, and that's causing the output to be clipping. Now there's a correct way to fix this, and another way which you think would work, but it doesn't. So first of all, I'm going to show you the correct way. The correct way is to go into your control settings, select the channel, i.e. the center channel, and then go back into our basic filters, select preamp, and apply a gain of minus 6 dB. And as you can see, this fixes the problem. We no longer have any clipping occurring. Whereas if we were to take this and bring it up above the copy channels, it's no longer working. Why is it no longer working? Because we don't have any audio going into the center channel until we have the channels being copied across. And so the negative 6 dB of gain is applying the negative 6 dB of gain to no audio. No audio is being processed with this gain value. Whereas when we put it after the copy channels, we have the audio from the left and the right channel that the gain is being applied to, allowing us to take that gain value away from a given audio input. We're going to reset our control back to all, and we're going to go into our power metric filters. In my opinion, I wouldn't use these because they're minimum phase, but that's only my opinion. If you wanted to, you could. If you want to use the linear phase version of these, look out for my future video on Rephase a complete guide. I'll show you how to implement all of these different types of filters in Rephase as linear phase rather than the minimum phase versions as shown here. Same for the graphic equalizer. Next up in advanced filters is loudness correction. Loudness correction is really useful because as you decrease volume below reference level, typically 75 decibels, what will happen to our hearing is our hearing actually changes sensitivity. And so at lower volumes, we have lower sensitivity to high and low frequencies. And this program corrects that using equal contour corrections. What this means is that as you change your Windows volume control, this program will automatically adjust the gain at different levels and compensate for that effect. So that no matter at what volume, the sound signature should sound the same. Now what you'll want to do with this program is you'll want to go into the calibrate section, select an individual channel, hit play, and use an SPL meter or a USB measurement microphone with a program like REW that can use your measurement microphone as an SPL meter, and then adjust your Windows volume until it reaches 75 decibels at your listening position. If at maximum volume in Windows, you still aren't getting 75 decibels, you can change this value to the value that you're reading on your decibel meter, say 70. Hit save and you'll have your corrections applied. Hope you've enjoyed my video and I hope you get plenty of use out of this program just as I have done over the years. If you liked this video and want to see more, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And on screen now you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you might want to watch next.